I once read a story in one of Bell Hook's books, I think it was Teaching to Transgress, or perhaps it was the uh, uh, Feminist Theory from Margins to Center, and she was telling a story about, um, it was a slave narrative, and basically there was a black woman who was spread out, spread eagle in the front yard, uh, naked, tied, arms, legs, spread out uh, in the front yard, and she was being, she was beaten by this, her white slave owner, and was kicked in the mouth, and he was yelling at her to stop screaming and yelling and all this stuff. And this story was retold by a freed slave, a man who had, I think he had purchased his freedom, and uh, he, but he was working for this man, and he had come over the wall, and he watched all of this, and he had seen this woman just being kicked in the mouth and beaten, and she was screaming and screaming and screaming, and later he asked what she had done, and she had burned the waffles. Now, on the porch was this white woman and two little white girls, the man's family. And it occurred to me that, just like today, how I feel that racism, the, prop, the, 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 the mission to end racism has fallen upon people of color. And even it's gotten so confounded with the uh, issue of class that it's like it's fallen on poor people of color as victims of racism. And we're still talking about class and race and it's as if it's our responsibility to erase racism when when I think about that situation of that white woman, she must have been thinking, wow, it's either her or me. And those children having to watch their father be a terrorist and terrorize a woman who probably less than an hour later was back in the kitchen or back in the home caring for those kids. And you think what terror they've seen in their lives. America, for example, really needs to have a conversation about it. And people say that we've never really healed from it, but I don't think that uh, we've taken the step to really have compassion for one another. We point fingers at one another, and the fingers are to be pointed at one another. And for creating the situation that we have today of such great health disparities and economic disparities and social disparities in a very unequal nation um, that, that makes it very difficult to climb out of a cycle of poverty. But what you see is the plantation politics playing over and over and over. So that black woman um, finds her way into master's house. And so does that black man who was looking over, you know, looking over the fence and looking what's happening to her. What about that white woman? And what about those white kids? You know, what about untreated mental health uh, diseases back in those days? Um, we have a very torn history in the West. And going about the world propagating democracy uh, demands that we take a good look at ourselves and be willing to face ourselves. And if we can't start with the people in the mirror, then of course we can't spread democracy and, and prove that democracy really works. Because at this point, it doesn't. We have an upper class and an underclass. And be that about race, be that about gender, be that about class, um, it's a part and parcel of our nations. And it means that we cannot live to our fullest potential. And that's all of us. That's all of us. So the conversation has to be there. It has to start with dialogue. It can't be about pointing fingers.